Welcome back to the shop. A while back, uh, the local classifieds turned up a fine Accurite Microline digital readout. It seemed like it would be just right for the K&T mill. Um, it was about the same price as one of the Chinese import ones. It was used, but everything seemed to work when I tried it out, so I thought it would mount it. The only problem was on the Z-axis, figuring out where to mount it on this uh, Kent Bridgeport clone head. There's one hole on the part that moves up and down to for the power shutoff, and then there's two fixed holes, so I thought that might be the way to go. So the first step was to put some uh, transfer screws in to the holes, to the fixed holes, and uh, mark the uh, piece, the aluminum pieces I was going to use to hold the uh, scales on. For those of you that don't know, the transfer screw is just like a little screw, that, set screw with a point on it that goes into the threaded hole. And then you can put the part up where you want it, give it a tap, and it leaves a little center punch mark where you need to put your hole to get your part where you want it. So after getting the holes punched, the locations marked, I went ahead and drilled and countersunk the uh, aluminum, quarter inch aluminum that I needed to put together the brackets. Then I mounted, went ahead and mounted those little aluminum pieces up to the uh, head itself so I could kind of see where the scale was going to mount. After getting those two pieces mounted up, I went ahead and attached the, sc the, the scale to them, a couple of threaded holes, to uh, see if I could get the positioning right. I was trying to figure out what the position of the reader head would need to be. So here I'm just trying to measure how far out from the uh, little post that moves up and down with the quill the uh, back of the reader head of the unit is. So what I did is turn down a uh, little slug that fit nicely in that post, drilled it out to get a bolt through it. Uh, Got to use my taper attachment here. I'm just adjusting the taper attachment to cut a taper on the inside of that hole. So you bite, you loosen each end, turn the little knob. I wasn't trying to get any specific angle, just a, you know, a good angle. And uh, then the uh, carriage is unlocked from the lead screw and then it uh, will just follow that taper along there. So with taper attachment set up which of course took much longer than is shown in the video I had to edit it so nobody died of boredom but uh, with that set up then just got a little boring bar a little mini uh, boring bar for my boring head mounted in there and uh, you can see just cutting a nice little taper did a good job took light cuts it's a teeny boring bar as you can see so Took fairly light cuts, but after a few passes, ended up with a nice little taper. Here's a close up, got a nice surface finish inside. The surface finish on the outside doesn't look quite as good. I'm not sure why that is. I didn't notice that. I was cutting up, I'm parting off the piece. Uh, it's kind of nice to work. This sort of big heavy lathe is nice. It, it's parting a little less exciting. So here's the part that the reader head is going to mount to with a little tapered bore there. So next I had to chuck up a piece of rod in and here we'll go into slow motion to show what happens when you have the lathe rotating the wrong direction. There it goes. Did you see that edge break? And there it is. So now with the lathe turning in the right direction, which is in reverse actually, um, I'm cutting on the back side of the part because that way the taper attachment, uh, without moving the taper attachment, I'm cutting the same taper as I cut in the bore. 
and uh, go ahead and get a, a nice taper I cut on the rod that'll fit the taper in that last piece in there. So yeah, when you turn in the wrong direction, it really makes a mess of the uh, insert. So then I drilled this piece out, and then it was threaded. Because that's going to it's going to accept a screw coming through the the uh, the taper on the other part. Just giving it a little test, make sure it'll fit. Then I fit up the uh, reader head mount and marked how far into it the the uh, tapered bit that I just turned was, and then. Uh, parted off that little piece with just where it uh, was set all the way into the bore of that tapered bore. I put the uh, read, reader mount back in the three jaw and just made sure it was running mostly true and then went ahead and faced it off. There was a little bit of, you know, it was just a parting surface. It wasn't have that good a finish on it. And then I went ahead and uh, used an end mill. I didn't have a counter bore that fit the head of the uh, socket cap screw I was going to use. So just make sure it fits in there. And uh, quick counter sink or a chamfer on that bore. So now the uh, little tapered piece fits down in the tapered bore. As you can see, I did manage to break my thumb. That's a story for another occasion, but there you go. That socket cap head threads in there and locks that little plug down in the tapered bore. So here's the um, worst arbor in the entire world cutting. We're running a slitting saw trying to cut the slits in. It's a I hate to admit it, but it's a Harbor Freight Arbor that I don't know what it's meant for. The thing's so bad, it's completely useless. So I gave up on that and uh, went old school and cut the other slot with the hacksaw, which is probably how I should have started. So the idea here is to make, to allow the, the end of this to expand like a collet. So when it's inserted into the hole and then that uh, socket cap head screws tighten down, the tapered plug expands the taper and locks the piece into that uh, into that bore. And now with the reader head mount mounted up, I can uh, put a dial indicator on and check the trout, the, check the scale to make sure it's parallel to the travel of the quill. And uh, it was. It was a pretty. It was pretty good. I didn't end up. I thought I might have to shim it or uh, figure out some way to adjust it, but it uh, it was well within the spec that was in the manual for how a how accurately mounted the scale needed to be. So then I just checked the uh, the alignment in the other direction, and made sure I'd mounted the scale up. I just got it, as you can see on top, I just got it clamped in place. So here's the reader head with the one side cut off so it clears the scale. And I'm just uh, figuring out, I've got the reader head clamped to that mount so I can make sure everything's working. There's some in the manual there's some specs on how far from the back edge of the scale the reader head needs to be mounted so I took a little bit of fiddling to get the that mounted up just right as you can see the uh, with just it clamped onto place with the C clamp it looked like it was working I still have to get familiar with how that digital readout works but uh, looks like everything's working pretty well, so I'll move on to a more permanent mount. 
There's just kind of a show how I mounted the the uh, arm. I, I took off the plate. There's a vent. That's a vent, and I made some studs that I could mount on there. You can kind of see the studs. Kept them kept it off the vent a little bit so it can vent that case, and then welded a rod to it. That the uh, arm that came with the uh, digital readout mounts too, kind of to keep it convenient. Didn't, didn't want to alter that cover or anything at all, so you can just pull those studs out at a later date if necessary. So here's the reader head mount. All uh, got to see the slits and the little plug in it. So I'm mounting up again with a broken thumb. It was not that convenient for a few months. Those of you who have used a high lift jack might be able to relate. I've used them for many years and been lucky, I guess, but my luck ran out. So here I've got some parallels mounted up to hold everything in place. And I marked and, and uh, drilled and tapped some holes for the, the uh, bolts that hold the reader head onto my mount. So here we have it mounted up. Just checking it out to see how it works. And everything seems to be working. Never had a digital readout before, so I'm kind of excited to try it out. Just had to try it with the uh, hand crank as well. I just here's a kind of a close up of the, the little bracket. You can see the welded. We've got two pieces of flat aluminum TIG welded together, milled out on the back to clear the top of the head. As you can see I had to mill a little a little bit out, but the reader head is in the is mounted in with the post and Everything seems to work real well. Nice smooth travel. It seems it seems to be repeatable in the, the little bit of testing I've done of it. And just a, kind of a view of how it mounts on the head. And the next thing I had to come up with was a way to allow the cable to travel up and down to avoid wear on that cable. But I wanted to just use the existing. I was trying to avoid drilling and tapping the head for anything new, and this seemed to work well for that. So here's what I came up with to guide the cable. A piece of uh, UHMW Ultra High Molecular Weight Nylon. I had to slit it to slide the cable in and uh, then just use some zip ties to kind of lock it back together. I've got a zip tie holding it to the top of the the aluminum mount that's bol bolted to the head and uh, seems to do a good job. Shouldn't shouldn't wear on the cable or the braided steel and then a little uh, just a little cable lock to kind of hold it in place back there. Uh, I think it should work pretty well. Uh, the, only contacting the nylon. There's a couple still photos of the finished product. Uh, it was a fun project. Uh, it wasn't too time intensive, but uh, I'm excited. It's uh, proved useful already on a couple projects. And um, working on getting the uh, Y axis axis done. It's going to be a little bit trickier to mount. Uh, there's not a good surface on the y-axis. The z-axis was fairly easy. It's just bolted to the back of the table. But the next uh, next video will we'll work on the y-axis. I'm doing some aluminum casting for some brackets and see how that goes. Appreciate you watching and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.